Lesson 6, Message Boxes. To follow along with this lesson, you will need the project from Win32 Lesson 1. In this lesson, we are going to explain how to use message boxes. A message box is a simple dialog that pops up to tell the user something. Here's an example. The message that a message box gives is typically very simple, and the user is often presented with a few simple options presented as button selections. We begin with our Win32 Lesson 1 project open, and scroll down to the WinProc function in the file Win32Lesson1.cpp. At line 149, we see the code to pop up a dialog box inside the IDM About event handler. This code is executed when we select Help and About from the menu bar. Since we need a way to trigger our message box to pop up, we will replace the code for the About dialog with our message box code and we will start by replacing line 149 with this call to the message box function. Executing the program and selecting help and about, we see our message box pop up. Let us look back at our message box code and we will explain what we have done. The message box function that we call is a global function. We use the scope resolution operator to make this clear. The first parameter of the function is the handle to the window. By passing in this handle, we designate this window as the owner of the message box. Making the window the owner blocks the window from receiving further user input until the message box is closed, either by clicking the close button or the OK button. You can verify this by trying to click the menu while the message box is still open. The second parameter is a string that is displayed inside the message box, and the third parameter is a string that is displayed in the title bar. Finally, the value MBOK tells the message box function to put an OK button on the message box. Looking at the first parameter again, we can set this parameter to null. In this case, no window owns the message box and we can pop up multiple message boxes by repeatedly clicking help and about. This is strictly for illustration and typically not desirable behavior, so we will change the code back. The next two parameters are just strings, however we apply the underscore capital T macro to these strings. This macro changes the strings from ASCII to Unicode or wide character strings. If you are not familiar with Unicode, don't worry too much about it and just use the macro. The fourth parameter designates which buttons appear in the message box. There are several predefined values which we can use and we can see these by right clicking MBOK and left clicking go to definition in the pop-up menu. This brings up the winuser.h file. In line 7282 to 7328, we have many styling options for our message box. For example, we can use MB Yes No to request whether the user would like to play another game. Change the message box code to this, then compile, run, and select Help and About and you should see this. Now we have a message box with a Yes and a No button. When the Yes or No button is pushed, a value is returned. Next we add handlers to pop up another message box to indicate that Yes or No was pressed. Executing the program and selecting the Yes or No button, we see this. Finally, we remark that we can add styles to our message boxes using the bitwise OR operator and our styling options. For example, we will give the first message box the question mark icon, the Yes message box the exclamation icon, and the No message box the hand or cross icon. Executing this code, we see the added icons in our message boxes. This concludes the lesson.